Okay, um, in this video, I want to show you how you can do some basic scaling and positioning in Premiere. First, I want to show you the simple premises of uh, the premise of what we're going to be doing. So I have this basic uh, transparent PNG where the space inside the TV is um, the transparency, and I'm going to have a small video playing behind it. And over here, I'm going to have a logo show up. So I selected Premiere and I opened a project, and I've already saved it called Scaling Positioning Project. And I'm going to go ahead and pull some clips in. So let's go to File, Import. And I'm going to import this folder here called Gas Masks. I'm also going to import my logo and also this tv.png. You can ignore anything else that might have been in that folder. And so it puts it down here. And don't forget, if you end up with something that looks like that and you want a list view, you can toggle it down here. All right, so I've got all these images, or excuse me, movies of gas masks. And so if I take a look at them, you can see which ones. They're kind of goofy, these crazy looking things from uh, the 50s. And they were these promotional safety videos, believe it or not. Anyway, so, uh, and these are public domain images. And so what I want to do is I actually want to look at my TV uh, icon here. And I want to drag that into my timeline. And just remember, it's very short. So it's a very short little clip, and it's intended to be short. And But I could drag it out as long as I, I need it to be. Um, now, the thing that I'm going to also need to do is uh, I'm going to have to put that. I want to put that in a higher channel because I want my um, movie. I think I'm going to take this one here. If you were to look at this one, I like this one because the faces are bigger. It'll be easier to see what, what it is that we're looking at. I'm going to drag that one into the timeline. And it's only that long. But you'll notice that it's gigantic in the background. And if I were to hide the mask, then you see that it's auto-sizing to go to the regular size of the movie. So what I actually want to do is I want to figure out about how big this thing should be and uh, you know, also about how, how it should be positioned. So what I can do is I can select this while uh, it's in the timeline, and if I uh, go ahead and select it and then go up here and click on effect controls, one of the things that I can do is drop down the motion tweening options, and I want to, while it's on the first frame of the video, I want to go ahead and, and make it scale. And so by adding a keyframe on the first frame, it's going to be applied to the entire sequence. So uh, what I think I want to do is let's drop the scale down and we can start to scale it to see about how big it should be. I'm thinking probably somewhere somewhere in that range. Um, if we were to look at the TV layer again, you know, you start to see it peeking out through there, and that looks like it's about right. Um, and so the next thing I want to do is I also want to, uh, while that's there and while my mask is turned on, I want to turn on my position. Um, so I keyframed it while it's in the first frame. And I want to change the position. So the way you can think about this is uh, it's on the x and y coordinates, x being horizontal, y being vertical. And if you were to look at this actual mask in Photoshop, what you could start to think of is the way that it's uh, orienting itself is based on the center of the movie. And so if the center of the movie, for instance, is like here, then what we want to do is see where it would be if the center of the movie was moved to be right here. So we can estimate by opening this Photoshop document and just looking at it like this. And you see it starts to show us approximately where that center point is with the Photoshop information on the screen. It looks like it's somewhere somewhere in the ballpark of on the x-axis around, I don't know, 600 or 620 or something like that by also by, I don't know, like 635 or 625 or something like that. So that's a good starting place, and we can start to guess. So let's try something like, let's do, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what I said, 620, and then that is about right. And then let's try, I don't know, 600. And that starts to get it in the right spot, and it looks like it might also need to be about 620 as well. And so that starts to look like something that's going to play properly. And then if we play it, you see that, in fact, it's got these little moving gas mask heads. And the other thing, too, is that if I want that clip to only be as long as this other clip, then I can pull in my TV mask, and then it'll only be as long 
and everything uh, clips off at the same time. It'll be only be as long as the TV movie. Um, and so that's a really simple way that you can um, move things around, make some movies smaller than others. So if you wanted to create, like, say, a grid work or something like that, you could on the screen with a lot of different videos playing at once. Now, the other thing I was going to show you, too, is that if we want a logo in here, let's pull the time uh, playback head all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to take my logo. And by the way, my logo is an EPS file, so it's a vector file. Um, that means that there's certain things that I I can't really do to it. I can't try to apply like raster effects to it. Um, I might actually end up crashing the, the application. But um, I can still use my vector files and they will still scale nicely. So you see that it's like a production company. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna position it off to the side here. And so again, while the playback head is at the beginning of the clip, what I would wanna do is I would want to uh, make sure that I have that selected in the timeline properly. And then I want to uh, open up motion and I want to put a keyframe for position and I want to adjust it. So I need to adjust the X axis. Let's try something around, I don't know, 1400. That's about right. And remember it's putting it 1400 pixels over from the left edge. Okay. So that's where it's centering. And I actually like the, the vertical axis. It's, it's already centering, centering it. So that's fine. Um, and, if I really wanted it to be on the same height level as the TV, I, I could move it down. So that's always something else that you could do. Let's, uh, let's try like 600 and maybe a little bit more. Let's try 620. Remember, because the other movie was at 620. And so that might be about right if you want them to be sort of on par with each other. That's another option. So uh, we, could, we could have it start there. All right, and then it's gonna be there for the duration. And again, I'm gonna pull the clip in so that it matches the other things. Now, the other thing that I think that I'd like for it to do is I'd like for it to start off being very, very tiny and then zooming in to be 100% right there. So maybe somewhere around here, I want to put a keyframe. Let's do it somewhere like maybe midway, slightly more than midway. I'm gonna put a keyframe for scale Okay, and I'm going to put the keyframe for scale at 100% so that whenever I move it, the playhead back to the beginning frame, now whenever I put another scale keyframe for that logo, I can merely just change it to zero like that. And then what you're going to see happen is it'll zoom itself in and it pauses and then it stops. Okay, and then you could have it fade out if you want it to. All right, and that's something that would be simple to do. Um, and you could make a decision on how to do that. I, I'm going to choose not to fade that out on the on the native clip because this would be something that you could distribute and put into other different movies, right? So uh, anyway, that's a really quick demonstration of how you can use the scale and position tools uh, or effects on your different objects inside your video.